Hey, welcome to another uh, Zebrush Quickies. So this one is a request from subscriber We Real uh, Sorry for the atrocious pronunciation, but uh, that's about as good as it's gonna get. So blueprints setting up orthographic blueprints um, was his request, and I actually covered this in the first part of the Rhino modeling series. Um, I think in that case it was uh, side and top, but for this one, I'm going to uh, I'm going to show with four so uh, front, back, side, and top down, which is more than enough to get going. So the first thing to do is uh, open up the divider here and draw a pallet four arrows and drag it over here so it's accessible here and it doesn't keep uh, disappearing on you up here so you'll see um, most of the stuff here is grayed out so we need to activate the floor um, which is essentially what the references will be attached to so I have a quick cube in here um, You'll see how, how we use this to set up the references. Um, so this is a reference for my reference. So I'm going to go over some of these sentences um, in a while. But first I just want to talk about this elevation. So that's the elevation of the floor. And by default it's at minus 1. Which means it's at the bottom uh, in the y-axis of your tool or sub-tool. It's going to be at the bottom of the bounding box. And that's the default. Zero will set your floor to the very center of it. And one will set it to the top of your bounding box. So this is like the maximum and the minimum, you know, if you're aligning your 3D package. So I just thought I'd let people know that. So back to minus one for the default, which is the bottom. So the next one here is uh, fill mode, and you see. I have this up in my UI because um, I flick through these modes a lot if, if I am using reference. So if you hover over it, and like all things is ZBrush, press control or most things, uh, you'll get a little pop-up tool tip and it'll explain the different fill modes, 0, 1, 2 and 3. So um, you're not going to see that now because we don't have any references attached to our grid. So if we mosey on down to front back you can see now some of these uh, buttons are active when we turned on the floor so map one is front map two is back and um, you can switch them around but for simplicity just you know just keep them as they are easy to remember up down left right same the first one is up second one's down and so on so map one and it's going to give you a pop-up and i have me um this reference in this case which is perfect for this is a car um, four different views and um, another little tiny tip just import your reference into your texture palette first otherwise you'll keep having to import it from here every time so I'll just import it and it comes in quite large so adjust is the first place to go first part of call and this is going to be the front so you grab these little um, red circles and you can just align it here to um, the very outside of the pixels. So I'm lining it up here and the bottom is going to be um, the bottom of the tires. And because these blueprints are pretty much perfectly lined up, um, it's all going to work nicely. So I just got the top. And you can also adjust these here with these sliders um, because... Um, it can be a little bit uh, finicky here so what you might want to do instead um, it's quick to set up here but you can also just chop your image up in uh, Photoshop beforehand crop it into four separate images save them out just make sure to crop it here the same as I'm cropping this and then you can just import them straight away and you have a bit more accuracy um, and finesse if you use the um, crop tool in Photoshop and then you can also uh, just uh, some just color correction settings here if you want to mess around with them so okay to that and same again map 2 is going to be the back and as I said earlier if you didn't load this from the texture palette you'd keep having to it wouldn't appear up here just because you loaded it in map 1 you'd have to import it again so 
same again, map 2, so you adjust, and crop to the back, same thing, to the outermost pixels, and to the top of the roof, and to the outside of the wheel arch, and bottom of the tires, and that looks good to me, another pixel at the top, as I said, finesse in Photoshop, so yes to that, and these other buttons here, um, inverse, just inverses the, um, the luminosity of the image, so that's the back front flip, just flips it around, so I'm going to select map one, so I don't have to keep going to the back, um, you can also switch out them, or switch them out even so front and back, but in this case if I press F, that's my hotkey for front, that brings me to the front along the Z axis, which is ZBrush Canvas's front view. So I will switch them back again, one just means that um, if you have this active, you can use one image um, for both, but as soon as you drop something here into map 2 it's, it's going to um, deactivate that automatically um, and flip rotate and show an inverse so they're quite obvious what they do so what I'm going to do now is if you come back here to the snap palette and I'm just going to say snap to mesh and now the grid is snapped to the size of your active uh, tool or sub tool and this is where I can show fill mode now so if I pop this up to 3 um, we have transparency and this is also where I'm going to use the, the box here to align so using transpose line I'll just drag out from a center vert holding shift and then top circle holding shift and top outer circle holding shift sorry inner circle and just snap that um, or align it there to the top and bottom and then you can see that our top and bottom are lined up. I'm going to be changing that in a minute and I'll show you kind of, this is just the way I, I set it up. It's really, it's really quick to do. Um, so that's uh, front and back. I can close down snap. And now we'll do up, down, map one. Select the texture, adjust. And this is the top. So up is is top and then down would be the bottom or whatever uh, reference you're using so I'm just gonna go to the the outside of the wheel arch rather than that um, whatever that is <laughs> handle door handle or something and just out to the front and that's pretty good so okay and now if I go to the top you'll see that um, we've got a few issues one obviously being that's rotate bleh, rotated the wrong way so that's easily fixed and now that's to the front if I press T to go into top view that's my hotkey and um, this is again front facing positive Z axis on ZBrush's canvas and now what I want to do is if I try to scale this up um, it's going to go to a maximum of 100% of its own scale, so it's going to be double in size, and that's the maximum um, that this scale will go to. So, um, you can change the grid size, I believe, um, to allow you to scale it up, but I'm not going to mess around with that. You can investigate that yourself if you want. Uh, it's the, All this stuff is in the ZBrush documents, which should be the first place that you go. For any software, really. Um, 3D Max was the first software I ever learned, and uh, back in the day, we didn't have the luxury of uh, thousands and infinite, pretty much, tutorials. Um, you kind of had to uh, bash the shit out of the F1 key, which was the help files, funnily enough, if uh, people still remember what those are. But yeah, ZBrush documentation, and um, we pretty much learned most of what I know about ZBrush from the documentation and experimentation. So that's top, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get grab me transpose line again, and first I'm going to max out the scale on this, 
and you can see that's it maxed out but it's not quite big enough so now I'll just grab the transpose line and scale that into the outside of the wheel arches and now it's obviously not going to line up there anymore so we just go to front back front one is selected and then just scale down slightly so that's 0 0.92265 make a note of that 0 0.92265 into back 0 0.92265 and the back now will also be lined up and now you can see from doing that it's gone from the top but that's not a big deal because as I said earlier you might have to adjust that again so just adjust that down and that will come into play when we um, import the side image so that's the next thing to do down to left right map one select the image adjust and red circles and just go about your business of aligning these up bottom of the tires again there's a couple of pixels there lost in that black line so I might just come down one into it and maybe just back there tiny bit and ok and same thing here so all we have to do because this we scale this to the maximum of two we can scale this to the maximum of two and then just flip and now we can see that if we go to the top view grab my transpose line and scale this out to the max it will also be scaled out here and we just need to get the top and bottom now correct so I'm just gonna do the same thing drag that up and take that down a tiny bit and now we're gonna have to scale this down a tiny bit again so front back and I'll just scale it to there there looks pretty good 0 0.90567 point nine zero five six seven for the back lined up lined up lined up and lined up it's still lined up on the outside here front back sides top bottom and front back top and bottom so that is our images lined up um, and you can see where this came in very handy and you know if I wasn't narrating this and kind of showing how to do it you can set this up in a matter of minutes and um, quite easily so that's pretty much it but I also want to show now um, the elevation again so you can see now all the images are on top of each other uh, which isn't conducive to comfortable modeling from references so I'll just set this to say minus 2.5 and what that's going to do is um, spread the images away F sorry spread the, f uh, the floor grids away from the default minus 1 remember 0 was in the center and um, minus 1 was at the bottom 1 was at the top um, so they're getting further away the more you go into the negative so it just pushes them out um, so that you can walk more comfortably and then you can see with the fill mode you can just turn off instead of turning off your floor here you can just set your fill mode to zero and another thing I like to do is you can see here you can barely see particularly the edge loops so if you come down to modifiers there's some handy stuff down here and this E enhance factor I'm oh, sorry E enhance opacity I mean you can drop that down and that's going to make your um, sub tool or tool less transparent and um, 
the edge loops are much more visible and then there's also I forgot to mention P line you can just turn that off globally or you can go in I'll show you now and um, say there's P line is on so I'll just go to um, Z modeler and you'll see now as soon as I grab a vert those three axes X Y and Z are those P lines so they project back onto um, your images back onto your floor grid and um, you can use them to line things up but um, personally I don't like to use them because I think they're annoying so my subjective opinions aside um, back down to modifiers and another thing I'd like to um, point out while we're here in the draw palette is um, yeah, the RGB frame and then the axis if you look down here you know there's our axis so that's Y that's X and that's Z and sometimes you know when you're in ZBrush uh, the axis might seem tiny and you don't really know where you are so that's where to adjust it you can see it getting bigger and smaller and RGB fill um, fills in that uh, grid whatever color you happen to have it set to and that's RGB frame and then we also have frame opacity so you can bring that way up and um, I could turn down the RGB frame it's just so you could see the um, the axis and by turning up that um, RGB frame or sorry the frame opacity um, that means your your grid here is gonna get brighter, I suppose, in the viewport. And then you could also um, set these colors. You can color pick these um, to get rid of your grid. And there's the E enhance coming back into play there. So you can mess about with them. One changes uh, your mesh, and the other one changes uh, the grid images. So that is that. Yeah, they were just a few extra options I wanted to show there, and um, that can come in quite useful. So, so hopefully this was uh, useful. Um, there's the grid size I was talking about earlier on where you can scale, scale it up or down rather than scaling these up but I, I prefer to just leave that and scale to this box or whatever mesh you happen to have in there as a kind of a reference to your reference alright then I'm going to leave it at that for this one and uh, I hope it was useful alright then, cheers, thanks, good luck